Hi, Colin, if you're there, I would love to start. Hi, everyone. Hope I'm clear. Ivy, confirm. Yes, yes, you are clear. Yes, so uh, welcome to our first session for the um, uh, first quarter of the year, that is on March, uh, right the Docs Community Kenya. And so we just want to go through some of the few guidelines related to um, the code of conduct. So my name is Collins Juma. I'm the content development executive at um, Stepwise Company based in Nairobi and also a software engineer primarily focusing on the web. Uh, so our code of conduct, so uh, as a community, we are dedicated to providing a safe, inclusive, welcoming and harassment free space and experience for all community participants, regardless of your race, your gender, national origin, color, immigration status, social and economic class, your education level, your sex, your sexual orientation, uh, your expression, your age, your family status, etc. So um, feel free to go through more about our um, code of conduct on the community page at uh, www.meetup.com forward slash WTD uh, hyphen Kenya. Yeah, so without further ado, we just want to have a believe majority of you are aware of Kahoot game and either we might have been participating in most of the communities. Yes. Before we dive into the Kahoot game, I will um, give you some few guidelines related to the game. Um, some rules of the game. So to join the game first, I will go to kahoot.it, which is the URL, or if you're having an app, installed on your phone so you can download the i mean you can use your app with a game pin of 619 619 so join the game so that we can now kick start it so before that so a few rules of the game is a uh, number one uh, the game is timed so every answer uh, we have time to, uh, to around 20 seconds. And the rule number two is that the faster you answer, uh, the more points you will score. So if you answer in one second or two, and someone else answers in five seconds, yeah, so keep joining in the game. I can see Walolo. Yeah, so yeah pichaku pikachu thank you and mary keep joining six one nine zero seven zero zero There are random questions related to tech ecosystem. So can either be development, um, management, PM, if you've done some project management, um, others are related to technical writing. And um, yeah, so they are quite mixed up, uh, um, but more of development and uh, anything related to IT. We are 22 in the group, so can you let's join the game? So the link is, let me just pull. Oh, 
Sorry, I think I went. So you can find the link on the chat. One more minute. We are at 10, so I think we can start from there. All right, so. Ready for the first question. It's known as repetitious expression. Which one is, not a, is known as repetitious expression? So I or I think this is more of grammar. <laughs> redundancy. Yeah, so redundancy is more of repeating expression. Let's see who is at the top. Walolo seems to be at the top, Mary Pikachu. Is a truthy and falsy. So technical writing differ from um, academic writing. Is it a truthy statement or a falsy one? Technical writing and academic writing. Is it a truthy or a falsy? You've got one second to answer. <laughs> it's different. Yeah, it's different from academic writing, writing an essay. <laughs> All right, let's see. Walola still takes the lead. Our next question, it's placed at the end of declarative sentence statement um, thought to be complete and after many abbreviations. The question was quite lengthy, but it's placed at the end of declarative sentences. Statements thought to be complete and after many abbreviations. So which one is it? Once you finish writing a statement, what do you put at the end? Is a period or a full stop? Yes. I use the word period, a programmatic word or class, if you're doing CSS, they call it class. Walolo still takes up the lead. Pikachu and Flavian, OS X, coming up next. <laughs> yeah, so the next question is, which is not a feature of technical writing? <laughs> is not a feature of technical writing. Accuracy, direct, clarity, accurate. All right, one person got it right. Accurate. Eish, while Lolo still takes up the lead. <laughs> yeah, so you've been highest answer track. So let's see the next challenge. Who created the web browser? This is under web, web developers in the room. So I believe this one you must be knowing. So who created the web browser? You've heard of www, World Wide Web. Maybe that's a hint. Tim Bernice Lee. <laughs> 
And most of this, sometimes, I mean, there is a quote that he keeps maintaining uh, that the power of the web is in its universality. And that means access by everyone, regardless of disability, is one of the essential uh, aspects to consider. Either in uh, content you're writing on the web, or where are you going to display that information, you must always ensure it is accessible by all persons, including the PWDs. Um, adding those, we call them assistive technologies that it can help them now to maneuver through the web browser. Yeah, so he's Tim Bernice-Lee. All right. OSX, number three. Next question is a truthy and falsy app development is the same as web development. App development, web development. Yeah, it's a hey, congratulations. Everyone got it right for the first time. <laughs> All right. Uh huh. Uh, the next question when was Agile methodology first created? I even don't know. I personally don't know. Let's see who got it right. <laughs> Agile methodology, give a guess, or if you know, you're lucky. Mm -hmm. 2001, nice, two guys guessed it right. Okay, let's see, come on, you You still the one who guessed it right. Magician is coming up. All right, two more questions. Which one of the following is not an agile methodology? XP, Waterfall, DSDM, TDD. Mm -hmm. Which one is not an Agile methodology? Yes, Waterfall is not an Agile methodology. XP means X programming, TDD test-driven development, which is still part of Agile, extreme programming part of Agile, and then DSDM is part of Agile. I think it means dynamic systems or waterfall is uh, a dedicated methodology on its own. All right. And the last question will be, uh, select odd one out in technical writing context. Select odd one out in technical writing context. Writing context. Uh -huh. Please mark the word technical writing context is our. So I think three people got it right. So essay writing is odd one out. In the podium, so we have number three as magician. Congratulations. Number two was Pikachu, and number one, I don't know who this is. Walolo. Could that be Walobo? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Waloba, you will gift yourself. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah, so I think next time we'll have some awards for the winners. Um, uh, for today, we will keep the records, I think, on our on our deck so we can refer it next. Otherwise, thank you so much for your participation. And I think uh, I'll usher in Ivy now to take up the next part of the session uh, for the speaker. I okay. will take it over. Okay, thank you so much, colleague. I really enjoyed the Kahoot. The first question was so simple and then we got to the <laughs> methodology and I was blank. Yeah. So I'm so glad uh, we got to learn a lot from the game. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, I'd love to welcome you guys once again to our session today, um, how to kickstart, uh, rather kickstarting your technical writing journey. And today we will be having a special guest. Um, she's called Cynthia Peter. She is a developer advocate for the art company. She's also a prolific writer from Anabra State, Nigeria. 
Uh, she says if it's putting pen to paper or fingers to the keyboard, she speaks volumes to her readers with very with every carefully crafted word. She has over three years experience in writing, passionate about simplifying technical concepts, holding the door open to people coming into tech and quality documentation. You can already tell from her bio that she's passionate about writing and she's passionate about building technical communities in Africa rather. Uh, her other interests besides writing include business, building communities, and building super valuable products. When she starts working, you can find her at the gym or at a new restaurant. She creates beginner-friendly content like, like, like I Am 5 blog and maintains a couple of mobile applications. So I think um, that is the little we have about, we know about uh, Cynthia. She'll get to introduce herself well during her session and we'll get to learn from her. So welcome, Cynthia. Uh, we're really glad to have you today. Over to you, Cynthia, Peter. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. And thank you so much for having me. I am Cynthia Peter, like she said, uh, a developer advocate currently working with the ad company, a US-based startup that is advocating for privacy and end-to-end -end encrypted solutions. All right, so um, no slides. <laughs> I like to have conversation and enjoy my conversations, right? So um, technical writing, right? So last time we had a talk on what technical writing is and how to get started and all of that. Um, so I think I'll cover three things today, how to kickstart your technical writing journey, whether professionally or as a hobby. So for me, I started technical writing as a hobby. I was doing it on the side while I was learning Flutter, right? So um, how it happened was I was learning to write Flutter and I didn't have any mentors or any help at all. So what I did was when I, when I ran into a problem or an issue, I would share my screen on Twitter, right? So I, I kept doing that for a couple of, um, the first few weeks, it ran in two months. And then I'll usually get help from people and I'll solve it and I'll still explain how I solved it after I have fixed the issue. It was going on for a couple of months and a company reached out to me, educative.io, and they said, hey, Cynthia, um, we see that you share um, your learning journey uh, on Twitter. Why don't you just write or create very short articles on these things? We'd really love to have them on our blog. And I'm like, really? And they said, yes. I said, sure, no problems. All right. So I, I went ahead and I started writing on educative.io, right? Um, that was how I started. I just did it. I, I, I wrote an article every week. And I did it because I just enjoyed sharing my knowledge. I didn't even know I was going to get to the point where I, I would call myself a technical writer per se, even though before now I've done blogging before, I've taken a couple of courses, content marketing courses and all of that. But I didn't really see myself as a technical writer. I just saw myself as a developer that knew how to write, right? So I did that for a couple of months. I think I did it for almost a year, just writing for fun, not collecting any money, not getting paid. I'll just write um, and put it up on, on educative.io and they will publish. And for like two or three times, my articles were like the most sought and found articles on the platform, right? So I got like two or three awards for that. And I was like, okay, maybe this is something I could explore. So uh, during COVID and all of that, I didn't have a job yet, a technical uh, a software developer job yet. So I took to Upwork and I started writing technical articles, right? So I wrote a couple of articles there and the feedback I got was like, okay, yeah, maybe I should actually pick this up like as a career, right? And that was it for me. So since then till now, it's been lots of technical writing for me. Right. So as, as someone else thinks of as, as a professional, I always advise people, if you are new to tech, then it's a tad more difficult because you need, as a technical writer, you're going to be writing technically. You have to be able to explain processes. You have to explain, able to explain things technically. Sometimes breaking down this process is so someone that is just visiting the website or trying to use this product will be able to use it without getting lost or without getting angry at your customer care person, right? So 
for you to be able to do that, you need to understand technicalities. You need to understand what a tech is, a tech stack is, right? So you can't write about JavaScript if you've never run a JavaScript code before. You can't write about Flutter if you've never, if you've never even run an emulator before, right? You can't explain an API if you don't even know what an API is or if you've never used one before. Because while you're documenting APIs, you would need to actually test some of the endpoints. So imagine if you've never used it before, how do you manage? So those are things that would make you understand that if you want to start technical writing professionally and you don't have a tech background, the first thing you want to do is to take a course, a beginner friendly course. Uh, it could be as tiny as even trying Scratch. Scratch is a tool for learning programming for kids. You can start as, with as small as that. It will give you the basic understanding or the flow of how um, programming or tech works. That's one good thing Scratch does, right? Or you could pick up a book that is beginner or kids friendly. When you're able to read and process the book from start to finish, you would learn some words or some keywords that are important to you as a writer. So um, starting your technical writing journey can be two ways, professionally or as a hobby. As a hobby, if you have a background in tech, you could keep coding and write on the side, just as a blog, just as a way of doing something fun. I know developers that are developers working full-time and also creating contents for another company and earning as much as 60K dollars per year, right? I, I know some of them, right? And people earn way more. So you can either have it as a, a side hustle, you can even have it on just your blog and make money from there, or you could decide, okay, I don't want to have it on my blog. I want to write for people, right? People write for smashing magazines. There are developers that earn $1,000 per article, right? There are developers that earn $100 per article. There are developers that earn um, $300, $400, $500 $400 per article. They don't have 10 heads. They are just utilizing their knowledge of a particular tech stack to write articles. You understand? So either way, as a hard professionally you have to you, have, you need to take a couple of courses either to introduce you to tech or to introduce you to technical writing all right so uh, secondly various parts one can take as a technical writer so i already mentioned that if you have a background in tech uh for someone like me i started with writing code i didn't even start with flutter i think i started with writing html and css in 2015 and php sometime in 2018 and in 20 sometimes 2016 and in 2018 I wrote um, JavaScript and JavaScript didn't work for me and I started Flutter in 2019 right so all these things have been different parts I've explored before I got to okay yeah I want to be a technical writer and now I'm never working as a technical writer anymore I'm working as a developer advocate yeah I still do technical writing I still write gigs I still do technical writing for a couple of companies because I'm on contracts right so I can work for as much companies as I want at the same time. It has technical writer. I can only work for one company as a developer advocate, but I can work for as many companies as a technical writer. That's how those things work, right? So um, some of the things you have to understand is this. When you start out as a technical writer, most of us, we are not even sure what next we want to explore. But sometimes you end up working with working as a UX writer right? UX writing is just people that um, cook keywords that you use on applications, on websites. Those keywords, there are some websites you log on to and the text they use just blows your mind, right? That's the work of a UX writer. They write based on experience that people the experience they want people to have when they visit the website or they try to use an application. Those cute words, those very fine words, those words that soothe you or those words that provoke you to react, to buy or to leave the website. That's the work of a UX writer. So many technical writers end up as UX writers. Some end up as developer advocates like me because the relationship between a developer advocate and a technical writer is as a, de as a developer advocate, you are also writing. Right, you're writing, you're creating content, you are talking to people, you're speaking at you're speaking at events. But as a technical writer, you're just focusing on writing content and technical content for your company or for people that are using your products. 
right? So we have UX writers, we have technical writers, we have technical content writers, right? So technical content writers are very similar to technical writers, right? Um, what else? We have um, API document documentation specialists. That's another group of people. Those ones, they are focusing majorly on documenting APIs, right? They test and document APIs, right? So um, there's a whole lot more, but I think these four are like some of the major ones, uh, major parts you can explore. Technical writer, UX writer, technical content um, writer, um, developer advocates, right? As a technical writer, you could start out just writing blogs, but before you know it, you're writing documentation for API, you're, write, you're doing UX writing, you're doing a whole lot of things, and you're like, okay, how did I get here, right? But that's how it works. Okay, so tools that will make one successful in their writing journey. Um, you need Grammarly, right? As a writer, one of the things you want is you don't want to write an article and people are finding errors in your words. So you need Grammarly in your writing journey. You need Hemingway app, right? You need um, the squeal bots for paraphrasing. There is, um, there's a whole lot, but what I use especially, my number one tool is Grammarly. And then I use Hemingway sometimes. And I use Quillbot, that's for paraphrasing. Maybe there are some lines, I feel it could be if I say it another way, I use Quillbot to test it out and try different um, words I could use that could work better, right? Um, those are like my three favorite tools, right? Um, I can't write an article and share or develop any content and share without passing it through Grammarly. Grammarly is my number one, recommended, highly recommended. And if you can afford it, go for a premium. Also, um, currently the premium I use, I had to share with a couple of friends. So we use it together as a group and we subscribe every year, right? I just did mine for the first time and it, it felt so good and I don't regret that decision. So if you can, you can get a Grammarly subscription and enjoy your process. All right. Um, that is basically it. <laughs> I think um, overall, I will advise if you've not started writing, one of the first things you want to do is create a blog. There is Hashnode, there's Medium, there's Dev.to, there, there is WordPress. There are lots of um, CMS you could use to create a blog. Create a blog and start writing. That is it. If you don't know what to write, go online or think of any topic you're curious about. Think of a topic as NFT, think of Web3 as a topic. What topic do you want to learn? What article will you want to read? What technical article will you want to read? What would you want to talk to your younger sibling about in tech? That's it, that's how you can start. Start writing from there, right? So there are no hacks to what to write. And you don't react to writing and say, no, I don't want to, I don't want to write this because I feel like 10 other people have written it. No, the honest truth is if you search any topic right now, you will definitely find at least 10 articles on it. You find a million and 10 videos on it. You find 1 million and 10 links and tutorials and resources so then books of course you find books on it now what makes your own writing different let me tell you um what makes your writing different is in the world we have over seven billion people and out of these human beings that are in the world there are people that are going to read specific articles and they will enjoy it because this person's tone of voice was different this person's tone of voice was what they could relate to and then there are people that will read the same article and say they don't understand anything. It doesn't mean the writer is horrible. It only means this person that read, read it and understood it differently from this other person. And that is how it is. We read the same, when you Google, for example, introduction to programming, they're like, on the first page, they're like 10 results, search results, right? But when you read through all of them, there are some that are lacking some things. There are some that are not very explanatory or very convincing. That's where you should start from. Write that thing you want to read. Write that thing that your younger sibling would want to read, your younger sister, your younger brother, your small nephew, your nieces. Think of something they would really want to learn about tech and write it for them. So 
write, write for that down the street that you feel would want to learn something about tech tomorrow, right? So we don't wait till the world comes crumbling down or we found, find a topic that no one has ever written about to write. That's impossible. You have to find a way to write these articles and do well, exceedingly well at it. I think that is it for me now. I'll allow you to ask questions. And if there is anything I haven't covered, please bring my attention to it. This is the bad side of not having slides, but I just prefer to have this talk without slides. It makes it more personal for me. So um, yeah. I think that is it. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Um, thank you, Cynthia, for that. Um, okay. There's one question in the chat section. Um, Bugwa asks, any course you'd recommend for technical writing? I also have a docs file here I could share with you. I'm supposed to convert that doc file to a uh, repo, but I'll just share it here and you can learn as much as you want. You can scroll down, comment, copy link. Um, So this is like my repo for resources. I still go back to this document like every day. It's bookmarked on my MacBook. And whenever I have like questions, if I have anything at all I want to learn about or something I that's kind of out of my head because most of the time you can't have everything in your head, right? So most of the time I just look through the document and help myself again. So... You can just scroll down. I have some resources way, 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 way below. Um, links that have helped me somehow. So yeah, communities. Uh, ideas, hints, very tiny stuff. Uh, a sprinkle of everything, basically. Well, I hope you helped someone out there too. And yeah, that's just about it. Um, any more questions? Um, thank you, Cynthia, for the resource. I think that's like um, a gold mine for technical writing. Uh, there's another question from Ava. Our STEM researcher, do you think transitioning to technical writing will be easy? What is the learning curve? Um, STEM researcher, I don't understand because I remember STEM is supposed to be science, tech, engineering, mathematics, right? You can speak up actually, you don't have to like type. But I think for someone that is already in STEM, you're like halfway into tech already, right? Tech doesn't have to be um, computers and laptops and all those complicated things, right? Tech can be as small as even teaching kids how to get started in tech, right? It could be as simple as teaching kids how to get started. It could be as simple as just um, organizing workshops it could be as simple as being a community manager it could be as easy as being a researcher right there are lots of companies that need someone to do research for them you could be a ux researcher there's a, there's a there's a role like that so you do research based on user experience for products for communities for anything at all right so that's that's a role you could explore ux researcher since you're a person that has um, a history with research that could be a good win for you it could be something you want to explore. UX research, um, you could be someone who wants to teach kids to code using Scratch or any of these technologies. You could even be like um, more of a moderator, a community person. You could have um, an online platform for people or kids in tech to learn STEM. I, mean, I keep using kids and beginners because if you're starting out, you don't want to go and manage people that are already in the system. You want to manage people that are coming in. So you have an opportunity to learn and go through the process, right? So yeah, it could be something you will explore. Um, did I answer you, Tully? Uh, 
somehow so um, thank you for answering my question so uh, my main actually like uh, what i was asking because for me uh back in the university i did a bachelor of technology in mechanical engineering and i majored a little bit uh, like a minor in computer systems so that is a little bit of programming in um, c and uh, c plus and uh, i'm at the moment doing like um a little bit of python because of um uh, I'm more into the machine learning and stuff. So the the, the question I was asking mm -hmm. about technical writing. So it's like um, uh, technical writing uh, in like this field which I'm doing. Can I like um, write about stuff that I'm doing exactly, and they become technical writing? So that was my question actually. Yeah, sure. As long as as long as what you're writing about is technical, right? I heard engineering. So definitely, as long as it's technical it's good and if it's not technical like for me i have i have about two or three blogs i have medium now on medium i just write articles that are not super technical but article articles that are important to me like things i want to talk about i write about them on medium so you could have um one blog and then you split it this is all you this is all tally this is all tally I'm well. So you could have, I'm talking about STEM, I'm talking about my personal life, I'm talking about research, I'm talking about STEM, and nobody will beat you, right? It's your space. Now, when you start writing about all those things, you it's a way of you testing out the waters and figuring out where your strength lies. And while you're at it, before you know, you find a company that is actually interested in maybe one part or all parts of it, and that's how you win right but you don't wait till you get to a particular point or you have a particular skill no with what you have now you can start teaching it could be maths it could be maths that are that are maths that is related to tech if you did engineering then maybe you have little very little maths um that also gets implemented in most of our programming so i don't know but it's definitely something you want to try out create a blog and start writing, whatever it is, research-wise, tech-wise, engineering-wise, just write. Thank you. Um, okay, think... um, so Dennis said he uh, attended a full-stack development bootcamp. You can write articles on CSS and HTML. You don't have to wait till J JS is ready before you start writing. You don't need to wait till you have a little. People write, there are people that are CSS developers and that's the only thing they do. They just write CSS in the company. Do you know how much they earn? Or people that just know only HTML. Do you know how much they earn? There are blogs that are just HTML and CSS focused. And they are doing very fine. So why do you need to wait till you know JS before you write on JS? I don't think you should wait. I think you should start writing immediately. You don't wait till then. Waiting till then is, is, it could be three months, it could be six months. And... I'm not sure you want to wait that long before you start trying out technical writing. Okay. Um, I think just to add on uh, Amwal's question, he says that he's, he did a mechanical engineering degree. I think the publications that um, allow or invite um, I think people in STEM or other engineers to write for them. We have like IEEE where they allow you to write uh, publications, research papers, you know, articles on various technical concepts. And the good thing about it is that when one of your publications gain like so much traction, they actually get to invite you to one of the conferences uh, to present your paper rather. So I have like, like a friend who did a research paper who got invited to, at MIT to present their paper. So I think those are platforms you need to look out for if you're thinking of uh -huh. uh, writing engineering papers. Um, also for the CSS question, if you want to write about CSS, as Cynthia said, there are some companies that are highly paid uh, to write about CSS articles. I wrote one article on CSS and I was paid around $350, which I think you should just do it if you feel like you have uh, something to share yeah. with the community. Yeah, so if you have any more questions, you can just uh, uh, post them in the chat section. Um, Cynthia had a question. So, uh, who? I I have a question. Okay, sure. Go on. <laughs> um, so say I I I like writing, right? I enjoy yeah. writing. I've written articles before, but say I've written articles on CSS. But then I see a job posting uh, that they need uh, writers 
on a certain technology, but I've not, I'm yet to learn the technology. But I know I have a superpower of maybe learning a technology in like a few days and being able to write about it. So can I apply for such opportunities as a technical writer? Yeah, sure. Um, you, you definitely can do that. Like you said, if you know you're convinced that it's something you can pick up, why not go for it? I've applied for jobs like that. Like, okay, uh, one of the companies I'm working with, I should be a year old with them by tomorrow. They don't use any of the technology I know. They don't use Flutter. I think they use um, Node, and I've never written Node before. So I just, <laughs> I just apply regardless. Like the worst you do is tell me no, but I'll try to tell you my cover letter that we'll see. I don't know this and all, but one of my superpowers as a technical writer is learning on the job. And I'm assuring you that if I get this opportunity, I'll be able to pull this off you just need to tell me what to do and i'll be able to deliver just give me deliverables right if you're willing to take a chance on someone then i am definitely the one you want to take a chance of just be able to convince this person and make them see reasons why you should be the one to be hired right so if you have a record of a record history of something you learned in a very short time and was able to write good and quality article about it that did well it's one of the things you want to highlight in your cover letter or even in your application so if they're asking for maybe articles that you're most proud of, you shouldn't be looking at the ones that you feel are good. You should be looking at the ones that you feel you did well on in a very short period of time. That would sell you more. Do you get? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, something like that. Or if you have somewhere where someone committed, um, you did an amazing job in a very short time or something like that, that's what we Always apply. Okay, okay, thank you, Cynthia. Um, anyone else with a question? Um, I think um, silence means no question, Cynthia. So before we uh, head to the next uh, bit of our session today, any parting shots, Cynthia? Any what? Parting shots. I didn't get that. Any final remarks? Yeah, right. Um, final remarks. Basically, one of the things we ignore is Google, right? The power of Googling, that's another skill. You can always go on Google and find out how or places where you can apply or get better, right? Don't You don't necessarily need to... Um, figure everything out by yourself or imagine it or see it in a dream. You can just easily go on Google and search for anything you want and you get a reply that would help you out or solve your problem. Also, while you're doing whatever you're doing, try to look out for people that have done what you've done and are on the path towards what you're looking to do, right? So for example, I, um, I, I'm very comfortable with HTML and CSS. And I'm looking to learn PHP. I don't need to go far. I just need to look for developers that are currently doing PHP and has a history with HTML and CSS. If I'm able to trace them down, I follow their journey. That is it. You don't necessarily need to wait till there is a special um, message or invitation for you. You can always do it better. You can always find on Google. Most of the people I call mentors today, or most of the people I call friends today, I met them on Twitter. Right, most of the people that offered to give me help when I was going through lots of um bugs and errors as a developer, right? Those are people I met on Twitter. I have them on my WhatsApp now, and we just chat and laugh. I've not even met a huge number of them. Plenty of them I've not met them. If I have hundred contacts on my phone list, I've probably I probably know like just eighty percent. The other, I probably know that just twenty percent. The eighty is just a bunch of people I met from like different parts of the world. I don't know if you know Juma Alan, but Juma Alan is someone I've known. He's from Kenya and I've known him for over four years now. We've been pretty good friends and we've never met, right? And for the first time, we'll probably be meeting this year when he comes to Nigeria for Oscar Fest. But that's how it is. You have to find people that have done this thing you're doing and try to look for how their journey has grown to this part. How did they grow to this part? If you're looking for how to know how they've grown, go through your Twitter timeline, go through their 
GitHub profile, go find their websites, find them on LinkedIn, right? That's how to do it. You don't relax and wait for things to just happen. It doesn't work that way. You have to be able to put yourself out there. You have to be able to reach out to people, build a network of people that are doing the same thing around you. And it will be easier for you to get help. But these days, we are at the point where you can't learn alone. Nobody learns alone these days. You have to be able to reach out. You have to be able to join a community and you'll be better. So that is it for me. If you have any questions after now, probably you think about it. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter. At I am Cynthia Peter. I'll be very, very willing to answer your questions. And I hope you guys really, really excel at this. Um, good luck. Okay. And thanks for having me. Too. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you so much. So yeah, yes, um, I think we'll just head straight into our last session of today's meeting. So I hope you guys can see my screen. Colin, can you confirm? Or Cynthia, can you confirm you can see my screen? Sure, sure. Okay, thank you. So as right the doc, we had um hi. Go ahead, Cynthia. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to know, um, can I leave? And I don't know if you would want me to be a part of this group, just in case you have questions. You can always just send me an invite later, maybe after now, but I need to run. I have some things I need to do. Is that okay? That's okay. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you so much for having me, people, and have an amazing weekend. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying, as Write the Docs Kenya, we had promised to uh, start our study groups this month. So, we have come up with a guide. I'm not sure if I'm able to. Okay. Yeah, I'll just add the link to the doc in the chat section so that you guys can get a brief overview of the doc. So, uh, we've come up with a guide or rather some resources to help you kickstart your technical writing journey. And uh, as Write the Docs Kenya, we'll be focusing mainly on three categories or rather four, but the fourth category is, um, is included in all the other three categories. So we have traditional technical writing, uh, which is basically just uh, writing online articles on you know, how to work with CSS, how to work with a certain technology and so on. So we have the traditional technical uh, writing, we have API documentation and docs as code. Uh, these are some of the topics or rather the parts you can uh, take as a technical writer and uh, whether you're doing it as a hobby or uh, professionally. So for the, for the groups, for the, I mean, rather for the various tracks, we'll be having um, a WhatsApp group to a general WhatsApp group for the study groups besides our technique, uh, besides our, our te Telegram channel where we will get to, you know, discuss or rather share our knowledge in the various tracks. So we have included um, some resources for the three tracks and um, for the three, three tracks, we will be adding some week plans where each week we'll be sharing some work to do or rather some what you can learn this week. So for example, if uh, for the API documentation group, we will be using the I'd rather be writing resource, which has a very well curated course, um, rather plan or track you can follow when learning API documentation. So for example, if we start uh, next week, once we all get to join the group, we can say the API documentation uh, study group will be doing um, an introduction to REST APIs this week. So this week we'll, we'll post that uh, the study group is meant to cover that. And at the end of the week or after every two weeks, we'll be having a session on what we've covered so far. So yeah, so as a community, we will be covering the three categories. So if you're interested in um, traditional technical writing, API docs or docs as code, you can join our WhatsApp group and we will uh, guide you further on how to go about your learning. So for the resources that we will use in the various categories for the traditional technical writing, we will be using the a course by Google, uh, which is basically divided into two. And um, the 
main audience is for software engineers, computer scientists, or engineering um, adjusted roles. Um, and also it requires that you have a little bit of English knowledge. It also requires that you have some little background in coding, which will not be, be an issue because the doctor's full code um, a track will cover some um, coding or will cover some coding knowledge. So if you don't have any coding no background, we will do that uh, under the doctor's code uh, track. And also for the APA docs, we'll be using, as I mentioned, another B writing platform where it has a quite descriptive or plan course or rather for the track. Uh, for the doctor's code, we will be using uh, the docs like code platform where it has um, some amazing resources on the various uh, tools you need to, uh, to learn so that you can be able to write soft, uh, documentation the same way software developers write good so yeah so these are the three tracks we'll have our study groups will begin in two weeks so i think next week we'll have a session for each category where we'll get to introduce you guys to the various tracks so that you get a general understanding of what it is before you uh, officially select your track so we'll do a session on traditional technical writing i think it will be on the same day uh, the session will be broken into three so we'll have uh three sessions in one where we'll get to introduce to the various categories so that you can decide uh, which uh, category you want to take as a technical writer. So yeah, this, that is all I had for you. Um, I think uh, more information will be shared in our WhatsApp group. So if you are yet to join, you can join the WhatsApp group or our tele Telegram channel. So yeah. Uh, before we end the session, because we only have two minutes, uh, you can uh, drop a question or a remark in the chat section, or I can just pick someone um, to share what they've learned in this session and uh, give a remark as well. I think I'll just pick randomly, um, Sandra and Dindi. Uh, hi guys, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Hello? Hello, Sandra. You can hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to say thanks for the session. Uh, I've also been writing a little bit, but I didn't know like the resources to use. So today I've learned about using Grammarly and um, starting on, uh, and the other one called Hemingway and a few other pointers, so I'm grateful for that. And uh, what else? <laughs> you can't remember what else you wanted me to say. I, I think you've given your remark, that's great. We are glad you got to learn about the tools you can use. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Joseph, Joseph Odiambo. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I, hope, I hope you can get me right. Yes, we can hear you. Oh yeah, okay. First, I want to start by uh, thanking uh, Cynthia for taking us through some of the basics on uh, technical writing. And uh, yeah, at least I've learned that uh, it, it is not like the normal writing where we just start, at least you need to have some skills. And uh, yeah, also thank you Ivy for uh, in advance for the training that you're going to give us. Uh, yeah, I hope that it will help us. Thank you again. You're welcome, Joseph. Uh, if you want to give a remark, you can just raise your hand. Meanwhile, I'll just uh, randomly pick uh, someone. Um, Yokabi. Um, okay, thank you. So, hi everyone. Um, so, I have learned that um, I think before when I'm new to check for writing, and I think before I used to feel like I need to be really good in a certain area, I think it's just learning that. Um, I can work with what I know now and write like what I would have, like what I would want to learn and I can just start there, which is like motivation and it's good. And just like the rest have said, thank you for this platform. Yeah. You're welcome, Yokabi. I'm actually glad you learned that you can actually um, start writing with the little knowledge you have. Yeah, I think we'll take one last comment and then we end the session. Ivan?
Hi, Ivan. Are you there? Okay. Um, since since Ivan is not available, um, Brian, Kai. Hello. Hi, Brian. I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Oh, that's really great. Um glad to have been in this session though i joined in a little bit late i really appreciate write the docs for holding such a session it has been a, a great session i will I, I i love technical writing personally i decided that this year one of my resolutions was that I, i'm i'm going to be a technical article writer so i think it, it's a good starting point for me thank you very much write the docs for all of that welcome brian <laughs> You're yeah. welcome, Brian. Yeah, you know, actually, yeah, I, I also had the same goal this year, so I think we can learn from each other. Yeah, yeah, I also, I, 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 I wrote two articles. I think I, I, I'll now keep moving on harder and harder. Yes, cause that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So if you're yet to join our WhatsApp group, I think I'll just share the link and then you can join the group. Uh, you can introduce yourself and probably state um, your goal as a as being part, as a member of our community. So I've reshared the link. You can join the group, introduce yourself, and then we'll share more details on the study group. So once again, thank you so, so much for joining today's session. I hope you've learned a lot and I hope you're ready or willing to kickstart your writing journey. And I really do hope it's pay well and you get to enjoy your experience. So have a lovely evening. We hope to see you um, during our next session. Bye.